sometimes you're going to be able to just imagine, right? Sometimes you're going to be able to just imagine a question mark there and solve it in your head. But sometimes you're not going to be able to do that. Okay? In the situations where you can't do that, what we're going to do is we're going to make an equation. And to make an equation, we're going to say let x equal log 5 of 3,125. And then we can use our definition and change this to exponential form. The base is 5. The exponent is what we don't know. That's x equals 3,125. And all of these ones here, if you want to write a note at the top, they would all be non-calculated. So you don't even have the option. Otherwise, you just type each of these into your calculator, push enter, and get an answer. So we're imagining these are non-calculator. Um, that would mean that the values should be on your powers chart. Unfortunately, I didn't put this one on your powers chart. This is 5 to the exponent of 5. And the way that we're going to solve these is the same technique that we used at the in um, section 5.2, where we used our powers chart, wrote both sides as the same power. So we could do this. Oh, so x would have to be 5. I'm going to tell you that for these examples, when you get your pretest online, if you're often one of those people like, I don't remember how to do anything when I get to my pretest, and hit the, hit the show me an example button over and over again, if that's you, I'm going to warn you that the textbook's technique for this is a little bit different. It's not bad, but I like this better because it's connected to the same technique we used earlier. Okay? You can use their technique if you want, but I'm going to tell you that I think this is going to be easier for you. So this might be like a little note to yourself that you should study this, because it'll probably be a little bit easier, because it uses a power chart. If you're using this technique, you have to start off by saying let x equal this, then changing it from log form to exponential form. And now it's the same kind of question that we did in 5.2. Can you get these to be the same base? Can you use your powers chart? 216 is 6 to the 3. Having a 6 to the 3 on the bottom of your fraction using your negative exponents rule is 6 to the negative 3. And at this point, we can say so. x would have to equal negative 3. Especially in the last question, okay, we say let x equal log 8 of 2 cube root of 2. Then we can change it. The base is 8. The exponent is x. I'm going to change the cube root to 2 to the 1 third. And I'm going to look at my powers chart. Because I've got an 8 and I've got a 2. Are they in the same column? Yes. I can change 8 to 2 cubed. And over here, this is 2 to the 1 times 2 to the 1 third. I have an exponent rule that says if I'm mu multiplying powers with the same base, I can just add the exponents. So this would be 1 plus 1 third. Here, a power to a power. Multiply. So that'll be 2 to the 3x equals 2. And adding those, get a common denominator. You'll get 4 thirds. So... 3x 
two is equal to four thirds. Divide each side by three, which is the same as multiplying it by one third, and you get x is equal to four ninths. I like this technique because it's the same technique we learned already. It's doing the same thing. Technique that the textbook uses, I think might confuse you a little bit more. For sure, I, I'm someone who loves to have multiple techniques. So make sure you look at the technique the textbook uses. But I would argue that you'll probably like this one the most if you've used it often. Questions for practice on number two? are 4, 7, and 9. 